Walkman stick em, whack em and stack em The old boys hard and deep in the bracket The dogs ought to work so hard to bring him back home G'day, how you doing? Today I'm talking about the stick knife I've heard the Aussies refer to this as being known as a pig sticker I've heard it called a bayonet A dagger A sword even But whatever you call it It's got to be the single most important thing that you take with you On your hip, in the bush When you go pig hunting you can leave your camera behind, you can leave your cell phone behind, you can leave your lunchbox behind, you leave this baby behind, what are you going to do when the dogs catch a pig? Bite it straight out? Anyway, in this clip I'll be talking about how to maintain it, how to make it work better for you, uh, placement on the pig when you're sticking it. So there is a pig sticking scene in this clip, so if you don't like that sort of stuff, get off this clip right now. Uh, but if you're a hunter and you want to know a little bit more, join me. See you in the clip. I've got that backwards. Have I? No. Right. It's good. Come on. Over the years I've always carried two knives. A stick knife and a utility knife. Or you might want to call that a hunter's knife. Uh, for, you know, boning out, gutting, skinning, all those little jobs. But to me it doesn't make that much sense really to carry that extra weight. I mean, we've got so much stuff on our belts anyway. Cameras, telephone, GPS, tracking gear, first aid. Well, I do. I've got a lot of shit on my belt. I don't know what you guys carry, but I carry too much most of the time. So if I can lighten the load up in any way, I will. And by having my stick knife ultra sharp, it can do the same job as any other knife. And just lighten that load up a little bit. So I'm going to show you how to get it razor sharp. So sharp, you'll be able to dissect a fart, cut it up into cubes and stick it in your mate's lunchbox. Come on, get out of there, pup. Leave those chickens alone. Why, crikey. Have your guts for shark bait. Leave those chickens alone. Oh, at least he's got good prey drive. Okay, let's get down to the business of uh, getting this knife sharp. Now, there's a couple of options. Uh, well, there's actually quite a few options, but there's two here I'm going to show you. This is an oil stone, also known as an India stone. This is from Norton. Comes with a uh, two side. It's got your... Very, very abrasive uh, 120. On the other side, it's 240. That will uh, be very aggressive on your knife. It's good for shaping, but uh, for getting a real polished, sharp edge, I prefer to use the Japanese whetstone. So I've got a couple here. I'll be starting with a 500 grit. It's got glass backing on it, so you can see the, um, the, the number there is 500. That's the grit. Uh, and then I'll be moving to a 2000 to polish the blade. Now before we get started with uh, that, what we need to do is we need to dress the stone. So we start off by making some, I've got a 6B pencil here, so I'm going to make some lines this way, full lines going like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a grid on the, on the stone so we can measure any uh, dips. Because if you're like me, and you're a bit of a lazy bugger, your stone will um, have not been looked after and it's really important to get that stone flush otherwise you're wasting your time so you can see I've got a bit of a grid there on it now over here, I'm just going to pan over here a bit I've got a, a bit of uh, wet and dry paper and I'm sitting it on a granite polished block which is absolutely flush, I've put a bit of water on there 220 is the ideal grit for this and uh, just going to start by rubbing the stone over the sandpaper and that will take off all the edges so we'll do that for about five minutes and come back and see what that looks like ok how are we looking alright we've got a, a little bit of a dip here and um, this looks pretty clean so we'll give it a bit more and we should be flushed and good to go right that's pretty good so the stone is dressed and we can get into it and start some sharpening. Okay, the stone's pretty much dressed. One more thing I do need to do though is take the taper off on the outside, that sharp edge. So just a quick rub on both sides and on the ends. And that's nice and smooth. Just stops the knife catching it. It's good to go. Right, 
This particular stone, you don't have to soak like some. Just spray a bit of water on, and you're good to go. Okay, let's talk about the angle on the stone. Now, the general consensus is that 22 to 23 degrees is what most people favour. That would be 90 degrees. Half of that would be, say, 45, I'm guessing about there. And between that and the stone, again, would be about 22 to 23 degrees. Now, I like to go to 15. That's only my personal preference. And at that angle, it'll be sharp, but it's going to lose its edge faster. But that's just what I like. Okay, now there's two methods. There's a Japanese method, which is basically straight up and down the stone like so. Okay, now right now I've got the blade pointing away from myself. So when I'm pushing into the blade, I'm relaxing. And then when I'm pulling, I'm allowing a little bit of pressure. Relaxing. And I'm listening for the noise. Now this whetstone I'm using here uh, is one that you don't have to soak. You just spray a little bit of water on it. There are other ones that you have to soak, but this one you don't. And after a while of doing this, you'll probably notice, so I don't know if you can see it in the camera from here, but I'm building up a sort of a grey sludge just starting to build up. That there is the iron filings. They are part of what sharpens a stone. So don't wipe those off. Don't clean those off. Keep those on there. In fact, they're, they're doing most of the work. So as we go along, we move towards the tip. And when we get to the very tip, this is the hard part. And this is the part we actually want to be really sharp because we want to have a, an edge that's sharp leading right up to the point. So the point is as sharp as a tack. So we're going to lift our arm up at the end of it as we pull like so, just on the end. Now that's the Japanese style, the Western style, pretty much the same, but we're moving the knife on a 45 degree angle on the stone, like so. So I'm there on that angle now, same angle as far as my set edge goes, which I'm using. Relaxing, pulling in, relaxing, pulling in. So going to the blade, no pressure, and pulling back, pulling back. When we get to the tip, we're going to lift up a little bit, okay, and pull around like so. So sped up, I'll be looking like this. We're also listening for the noise it makes. We want to have a consistent sound. That will tell us that we're not changing our edge. Maintaining the same edge is paramount to getting a sharp knife. Now, if you're not confident in yourself in doing this, you can actually buy a guide. There's places that sell them. Now, do that for five more minutes, and we'll come back and we'll see what that edge looks like. Right, I've been going for about five minutes now. So it's time to check out that blade and see what it's feeling like. Okay, I've got a definite burr on this side here. A very fine burr, so it's time to, to turn over and go the other way and repeat. So I've now got the blade pointing towards myself and the same will apply. I'm on a 45 degree angle. I'm relaxing as I pull to myself. And as I push away, applying the pressure. We'll give that another five minutes and come back and see how that's looking. Now I've probably been going for about half an hour on the 500 grit. It's time to, uh, to test the blade and see just how sharp it is. Feels pretty good. The tip is like a tack, and that's exactly how we want it. So that when it makes contact with the pig, it doesn't go sliding off into the brisket somewhere or sliding down the rib. Whatever it goes into, it stays there. You can drive it on a piece of paper. It's an old bill. It's always a good way to test your knife. You can do that. You can cut an angle like that. She's not bad. Okay. But you know what? We can still get this knife sharper, and that's by changing to the 2000 grit. We're going to polish this edge a bit more. So I'm going to start to work on this now, and I'll come back in five minutes and we'll see what, actually it's probably going to be five minutes on each side, and we'll see what it's like after that. 
I've actually done about 10 minutes on both sides on the 2000 grit and I reckon this is about as sharp as I'm going to get it today so let's give it one more test the tomato test right uh, tomatoes aren't in season right now in New Zealand so this one's not very flash but it's all I can find in the fridge let's just run the knife through there and see what that's like it's pretty sharp isn't it what about if we uh, just stick it on itself like that is it sharp enough to take an edge off like that there with the white tomato? Not bad. So now I've got my knife razor sharp. I want to maintain that edge. A couple of things that will blunt in your knife. Basic wear and tear. You whack into a stone or a bone or something. That'll take the edge off real fast. You can sort that out by stealing it and giving it a steal. But that's another topic for another day. And the other form of wear and tear is oxidation. If you get a layer of oxidation on that, it becomes what's known as iron oxide which is basically a flash word for rust okay now to stop that process a bit of this stuff a bit of olive oil on a rag I'll just put some on a rag now run that down your blade it's got a nice layer goes back in there basically this knife is annealed steel that's been tempered in the fire it's not stainless so it will rust if you don't keep that protected with a bit of oil that will ensure that when you take it next time there's no rust on the blade Okay, so we know this thing can slice a tomato, and we know it's got a sharp tip. What next? We're about to put it in the pig. Now I'm running out of time making this clip today, and I want to have it posted by tonight, because it's Tuesday. Uh, so I'm going to take the camera with me, and talk to you outside as I go about my chores. I was talking yesterday to a, uh, another pig hunter, Jono, and uh, we were talking about placement of the knife in the pig, and why it's important. And uh, we were comparing a few scars. That'll do, Bruno. Calm down. And um, he was showing me on his uh, what? the end of his fingers. Three of them all got bitten by a boar that was over 170 pound. After he'd already stuck it, he thought it was dead. He was uh, checking out the the jaw, and um, lo and behold, it grabbed onto his hand. It bloody hurt. I know a lot of stories of. Uh, pigs that have uh, got back up and uh, walked again. In fact, I've had it myself. I've, I've cocked it up a few times. G'day, pups. G'day, pups. Right. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, we've all uh, made mistakes with our knives, so getting the placement right is really important. That'll do, Bruno. Come on, Jim. Take the dogs for a walk. So that's, that's important, and uh, we'll be looking at... Uh, the two methods that are uh, most common. So there's uh, two methods basically in sticking. is uh, flipping and sticking, which is the more common one. Um, down through the uh, throat and into the heart. Or side sticking. Both work equally as good, so long as your knife placement is right. So when I finish doing this cow fence, I'll we'll go back inside sit down at the computer, I'll bring up some footage of a pig that Poe caught last month and um, talk about that. Also look at a diagram of where exactly a pig's heart is. Now a thing you can do, if you're not sure, is next time you catch a pig is you can leave the uh, diaphragm in, just drop the guts out, take it home with the heart, lungs still intact and open it up and have a look give yourself a really good indication. You don't actually have to always stick the heart direct. You can sever the main arteries going to the heart and that will kill a pig just as quick. It will drop like a stone. So we're going to have a look at that. We're just going to feed that bull and then we'll get back into it. Okay, got a pretty self-explanatory diagram of a pig with its heart showing. Actually, I think we need to make that a bit bigger. We'll zoom in. Oh, that's better. Now you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see where the heart is right here. Now if you're flipping and sticking and you're going in through the throat to the heart, it's a 45 degree angle. So there's flat along the bottom and it's up here on a 45 degree angle. I'll fold a piece of paper in half, show you what I mean. So if that's flat along the bottom, like so, your knife angle is going to be going there, boomfa. Alright, that'll kill it pretty quick. And if you're side sticking, you're just behind the front leg, now you're bringing your knife forward, you can do two things, you can go straight up into here, um, 
or you can go forward and you can do a slicing motion, which you'll see me do when I uh, kill this pig with Poe. That very quickly severs the heart, and it's good night, nursey, for the piggy. Very quick and very humane. Right, let's look at that clip then. Good dog, Pug. That pig died straight away and I stuck that knife in. And the other method which is just as successful and humane and quick is going down through the front, which I showed before on the diagram. Okay, there's a couple more things before I round this uh, clip up I want to talk about, about making this tool a bit better. Uh, here's a wee trick my mate Andy Two Dogs taught me and I've been using it ever since. I actually took this off while I was sharpening a knife, but it's a piece of string like that Okay, has no loop in the end of it, so you've got one knot there to stop it sliding off, and then another knot in this end here, actually we'll take that right out of the sheath, make things easier, and you pop a knot in there like so. Okay, that means that when it's in your sheath, on your belt, you've got the pig contained, only then you take your knife out, never before. You can't find your knife, often you're moving around, I mean the pig's not uh, giving up easy without a fight, so you're struggling to hold him and that. You can't find your knife, you feel for that piece of string, you've got it, you pull it out first, you've got the knife, and then you're good to go and do the bizzo. Right, so that's a, a wee hack for you, for your knife, so put one of those on. Do not put a loop on the end, otherwise it may get caught in something in the bush and get pulled out and you find you get to the pig and you've got no knife. Now the second thing you can do, um, which some people do, uh, if you're starting off with pig hunting or if you're someone who gets incredibly nervous or you forgetful and lose stuff a lot, is you can put a piece of tape on the handle. Now a bright pink will sharp really well in the bush, that's if you blokes are uh, comfortable with pink. If not, a fluorescent orange will do equally as well. That way you stick the pig, sometimes people put the knife down in the excitement, talking to their mates, forget where the knife is, can't find it, look around the uh, fluorescent orange is showing up really well in the bush and you can see it. I know experienced hunters that have left their, uh, I've been out with them, left their knives behind, I've had to run back a kilometre and pick it up. So none of us are prone to, to forgetting our knife. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, clip. Uh, if you have, give it a like. And uh, if you like this sort of stuff, subscribe to the channel. And um, remember these views are only my views. I'm only sharing uh, my experiences with you what I've learned over the years, they're not necessarily correct, just the way I like to do stuff, and I hope you get something from it. Good luck. Stick em, whack em and stack em, the old boy's high and deep in the bracket. The dog's gotta work so hard to bring him back home.